Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel again. Today I'll be covering how to secure your open source code libraries. Today in this video, I'll be covering what is an open source code library? Why do developers use it a lot? What are the security risks behind using an open source code library? What is the security assurance or security risk assessment as a security stakeholder we can carry out and advise to our developers in terms of advising them a secure and a safe way of using them. And at the end of this video, I'll be providing a takeaway, maybe a policy, which you can use as in a baseline to develop furthermore as in, a, uh, in your organization to use open source code library in a secure way. So what is an open source code library? Open source means it does not require any license. Code libraries are code packages which are available easily, free to use. Developers can use them in their software which they are developing. They can publish them as in a whole, as in one package, and they can change um, certain ways the, uh, of that library to use certain functionality, not to use all of them if they would like to. Open source code libraries are an integral part of every software development process. Nowadays, uh, there is no any software which doesn't have any open source code library. I mean, it's, it's rarely we see any software which does not have any open source code library. Um, ideally, 60 to 70% contribution in a software code comes from an open source code library. I got this data from a research and uh, yeah, there could be certain variations in this data. If I do a comparison of open original code and open source code, open source code definitely has a more percentage of a code in a software than, than its original code. Now the question comes, why do developer uses open source code library? It definitely fast track the delivery process there is no need to write those specific functions and features if they are readily available in the market, which goes back to reducing the cost. If developers are using them as is, then they do not need to write that specific feature or a function if they can use it from an open source library. It simplifies the process of an overall structure of the code. Open source code definitely provides some transparency and it's not a black box where we don't know what's happening inside the code. So definitely we have um, more visibility inside the code what is happening. If certain things needed to be changed, developers can change them. Open source code library can also help in solving future problems where developers might see that a specific feature or a vulnerability is coming again and again in some special kind of a softwares, then they can uh, huddle together in a community and develop a piece of code which everyone can use and that will solve the problems which they are which they are facing or they might face in the future. So what are the security risks comes with uh, using an open source code libraries? Vulnerabilities are the big one. Definitely they they can carry an inherent vulnerability with them and if developers will use them in their piece of a software, which means their software is now also vulnerable to that specific vulnerability, which their open source code was. Dependency. Um, a lot of those, these code libraries are very complex and then they, they depend on other uh, pieces of code as well. Then they become a bottleneck in the final piece of a software which developers are trying to deliver, which makes the overall code more complex. So dependencies are also uh, one of the problem which these open source code libraries brings to the code and make it very complex. Um, another thing is sometime certain open source code libraries are not being maintained and if developers end up using them, then um, basically they have no control and no support if, if there are certain problems, they, uh, they, they cannot request uh, who have um, created this open source code library to remediate those. So basically, 
if a developer ends up using a specific open source code library which is end of life then definitely it would not have any support and then it will throw some problems later in the future security operational issues are also one of the bigger problem of using open source code libraries where uh, post identifying certain vulnerabilities in future let's say developers use it, used the code in 2020 it was fine at that time but as the technology advances there there were some vulnerabilities introduced in 2022 or 2023 then there there need to be some a vulnerability management or patch management need to be done in terms of being compliance in, in being in compliance with certain security standards so at that point in time maybe that open source code library is not being actively maintained and then then developers would have no no options left apart from changing the whole feature or the functionality copy left uh, clause is also one of the risk which some of the open source code libraries have which means if developers end up using that specific open source code library um, they need to publish their software or make it publicly available which is also a risk if that software is commercialized or it's a proprietary software now let's discuss how we can use open source code libraries in a secure manner so that all the security risks are kept at the curb security policy is the first control where organization need to develop a policy for secure uses of open source code libraries this policy can have security best practices um, security guidelines advised by certain standards and frameworks organization need to carry out a inventory audit on the open source code libraries catalog or open source code libraries being used in their softwares so that they can scan them using vulnerability management engine then they can um, apply a patch management framework on those uh, open source code libraries as well so that vulnerabilities identified during the vulnerability management process can be patched accordingly and if developers end up updating those open source code libraries which is uh, pretty common then there need to be a version control maintained as well um, so that it's easier for um, the developers or uh, someone who is doing auditing to ensure that and uh, different versions or different vulnerabilities were um, remediated in the latest version of these open source code libraries reputation is another one uh, this is not um, um, a, a security control but this is some sort of exercise which um, developers need to carry out uh, they must do a check on the reputation of open source code library um, have they have have they been breached in 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 past or do they maintain uh, security hygiene do they and do they uh, are they in compliance with certain security standards and frameworks which obvious which obviously extends the assurance that yeah they take they do take security seriously or they have a security thought through peer code review is the another uh, set of a security control which organization can have in their security policy actually so that uh, when one developer is actually developing the code their peers can do the code review and if they see any anomaly they can uh, tag it or they can um, they can have this documented so that uh, or, or original developer who have designed the code can fix this vulnerability um, CACD pipeline again pretty common term nothing new here uh, make sure all the code goes through the CACD pipelines uh, where security can be looked at SAST stand for static application security testing and dash start stands for dynamic application security testing um, once the code has been gone through CICD um, CICD pipeline gone through the security testing and they'll, gen they'll generate some reports and if there are any vulnerability which are alarming developers should fix them and then um, scan the code again through the same CICD pipeline uh, lastly penetration testing is what can remediate and provide a holistic picture of an overall software um, that these many open source code libraries still have some of the vulnerabilities even though going through the poor, poor peer code review SAST and DAS testing so make sure penetration testing is included in the checklist before going live 
Now I'll be sharing the security policy. Um, if you're watching this video, make sure um, you subscribe to my channel, share it. Um, once I have thousand subscribers, then I'll share the security policy. No, I'm kidding. I'll share the security policy. Uh, this uh, this can be used as in a baseline. Again, this is this this is not and the silver bullet to solve all your problems of, of securing open source code li library but yeah these points can be used as in a baseline and develop on top of that uh, specific to your organization so the scope is only securing open source code library it's not about using open source softwares or applications or any other thing so scope is only securing open source code library uh, first thing is um, re, uh, no need to reinvent the wheel reuse already available code libraries or other software in your organization uh, if your organization is doing development activities it's been a while then yeah make sure you check um, your own house first if you, you might have some code libraries already which has been reviewed and approved by your security team so yeah, please use them rather than reinventing and searching for a, a new code library, which might bring all those risks and then all those checks need to um, be uh, need to be carried out on new libraries as well. Um, just just come uh, this this is from a personal experience. Avoid using a single point of failure. This is applicable everywhere, even in the software development as well. When you are taking a decision on using a specific code library. I'm pretty sure that it will go through a security risk assessment. And if security team sees a major risk in using it, then yeah, your, your all research and efforts might go in vain. So I would suggest always uh, look for the two options so that you enable your cybersecurity team and when they do a risk assessment and they do a comparison, they might come up or they might suggest, okay, this specific open source code library has a better reputation they look after security carefully than the other one so that you don't you don't um, thwart your aspirations in terms of the projected lines you have um, i might have discussed this earlier as well always use the open source code library which has a good reputation on a github or on their vendor website make sure it's getting updated frequently they have they do have the, the they do have um uh, their security best practices make sure they are practicing the security hygiene such as they are and they before even they publish their open source code library they themselves are carrying sas and das testing and they they are practicing at least um uh, standard security compliance and governance um make sure uh, that open source code library you're using haven't had any security breach in last five years um next thing is there must be an active support from the community who is developing this this code library as i mentioned earlier there might be there might be some vulnerabilities which you um discover in future and then um, it, it would be easier to requesting the same community who's maintaining it to fixing those vulnerability otherwise if if you as a developer ending up doing whole code development then there is no point of using open source code library Next, um, using libraries and framework from a trusted source, which are actively maintained and widely used by many applications. This might be overlap with one of the point I have mentioned earlier, but uh, the point I, I am trying to convey, convey here is do, do some research on those library. Has it been used by many applications? You might know some, you might, be, you might have been using some. So you, so yeah, do that check so that you have certain assurance and credibility which you can extend towards your organization towards your cyber security team so they know that you are an active participant in this um, create and maintain an inventory catalog uh, of all the third party libraries you're using in your software so that when time comes vulnerability management can framework can be directly applied onto these libraries and they can get scanned for all all possible vulnerabilities um, next thing is uh, proactively keep all the libraries and components up to date. Um, uh, there is a tool that has been advised by OWASP community, OWASP dependency check. Feel free to use it and 
and make sure that you always um, keep them updated as oh, n minus version i know in the industry is allowed uh, till the latest version is stable and you have that much time that leeway so that you can do certain changes in in your master code so that new updates are handled um, as expected um, reduce the attack surface by encapsulating the library and expose only the required behavior into your software what it means is, uh, let's say, if you end up using an open source code library, which brings 10 functions to the board, uh, then are you using all of them? If you are not, then um, the, the security best advice or best practice is to disable all those functionality which you are, which you are not using in your software. And then uh, at the end, code must go via peer code review, SAS testing, and DAST and penetration testing i know which i've already covered but yeah this is sort of a baseline for the security policy which you can leverage i will um comment i'll put all these points in the comment as well so that it's easier for you to copy paste um yeah and thank you please uh, subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the bell icon as well so that you can you get a notification whenever uh, i am bringing up a new video um, please let me know in the comments as well if you want me to cover any specific security concept. Um, till then, thank you.